Hey, biologists, this is Dr. B, and we are working on the lab photosynthesis in gizmos. We're working on a research uh, station in Florida, and we're working with scientists from Australia to solve a mystery that's going on in the Great Barrier Reef. In part one of this uh, video series, we answered the questions up to about question 13. We went a little bit further in gizmos. We're um, up to um, talking about photosystem two in gizmos. So I'm gonna pick up, I'm gonna review a little bit of photosystem one so you can answer the questions here. Um, by the way, the, the, the answer to question 13 is right there. Um, question 14, photosystem one and photosystem two are confusing because photosystem two comes first in the system and then one. They were named in the order of discovery, not the order of use. We are right now on the page in Gizmos where we are thinking about why H plus ions are important for an organelle with ATP synthase. We're going to watch uh, ATP synthase work using those H plus ions and see what happens. So we have some hydrogen ions built up. We're gonna put them through ATP synthase, and you can see, as we do this again, that ADP, which is adenosine diphosphate, it has two phosphates, um, and a phosphate go into the enzyme, and then that phosphate gets squished on, and it becomes ATP, or adenosine triphosphate, with three phosphates. Adding that last phosphate stores a lot of energy in the ATP molecule. And that's kind of the whole point of photosystem two, or the first part of the photosystem, in the light dependent reactions. So that's where we are, we're in the light dependent reactions, we're working on photosystem two, and now we're gonna transition to photosystem one here. Well, we'll talk a little bit more about photosystem two. We'll pass some electrons. They'll get excited by sunlight here and get turned into high energy electrons. It's kind of like uh, giving a toddler a double espresso. You kind of pep them up. We're gonna add energy with sunlight and we're gonna send them down the electron transport chain to photosystem one. So photosystem two splits water and gets those electrons revved up, ready to go through the electron transport chain to photosystem one. Let's transport some electrons here. So they go through this complex chain of um, molecules embedded in the thylakoid membrane, and they end up at photosystem one. As H plus moves into the thalkaloid, the H plus concentration in the thalkaloid increases, and we get H plus enzymes to send through ATP synthase and make more ATP. So as more water is split in photosystem two, we get more H plus ions and we make more ATP. In photosystem one, the second part of the system, we're gonna make a high energy molecule called NADPH. Remember ATP and NADH are these high energy molecules um, that, where we transform sunlight and we transform that into chemical energy that's stored in ATP and NADPH. When the electrons arrive at photosystem one, they're lower energy electrons. So we're gonna get some electrons. They're gonna arrive. We need to pep them up again. We're gonna add some energy from Uh, the sun, the chlorophyll, the pigment here, chlorophyll is the green pigment in plants, helps absorb that light energy. So chlorophyll's job is to pull in the light energy and help rev up those electrons. So they can do their job, which is to help make NADPH. Another high energy uh, molecule that's used to store chemical energy. Remember, we're turning that light energy from the sun into chemical energy in the plant. 
And right now the chemical energy we're making is going to help make glucose in the light independent reactions. PS2 supplies PS1 with electrons. So if PS2 is not working, PS1 will not get the electrons it needs to make NADPH. So when we're trying to diagnose problems later in the Great Barrier Reef, we're gonna look at what's happening in terms of NADPH production and ATP production to kind of figure out what part of photosynthesis might be in trouble. Which one of them is false about photosystem one? Well, this is photosystem one. It uses light energy to energize electrons right here in this chlorophyll. Um, it is needed to make NADPH, that's what it does. It contains the pigment chlorophyll right here, but it doesn't split water. That's photosystem, uh, photosystem's two job. Uh, photosystem two splits the water to get electrons. So this is on your lab sheet. Make sure you choose the correct one. Let's look at where that is. That's for question 16. So we're rolling on to question 17. And then there's a review section. And then we'll get to Rabisco. So now let's look at the synthesis part of photosynthesis. This is where Calvin cycle uses the chemical energy, ATP and NADPH and CO2 to make sugars. So this is the Calvin cycle. We've been looking at this, making ATP and NADH. Now we're gonna go on to the second part of photosynthesis, the light independent reactions, where we make sugar. This is the big deal, because we eat plants because of their sugar. Sugars like glucose contain carbon atoms. The carbon atoms they're using come from the air, carbon dioxide in the air. Plants, for the most part, are made out of air. That's pretty cool as far as I'm concerned. Those carbon atoms are coming from carbon dioxide. These oxygen, these red atoms here, well, they're not really atoms, but in this model, they're represented by red circles. These are um, oxygen atoms, and these whites are hydrogen, and those hydrogen come from water. That's the other thing a plant needs to make car uh, glucose. Carbon dioxide is used for carbon to make sugars. On land, plants and algae get CO2 from the air. Underwater, plants get and algae use the CO2 that's dissolved in water. So our Great Barrier Reef algae is gonna be using uh, carbon dioxide that's dissolved in the Great Barrier Reef water. The, that carbon dioxide is coming through the stomata they're kind of little doors on the underside of plants' leaves that let carbon dioxide in. There goes the carbon dioxide into the stomata. The Calvin cycle has a whole bunch of enzymes that help make sugars. One of these enzymes is called Rabisco, which is short for a longer chemical name. It sounds like a company that makes crackers and cookies, but it's not, it's an enzyme. Rubisco takes the carbon from CO2 and adds it to a carbohydrate molecule. This process needs water and is called carbon fixation. So it's grabbing carbon molecules and adding them into a smaller molecule and building a larger molecule called glucose. So we're gonna fix CO2, That's not we're not repairing CO2, we're bringing it in, we're attaching it to a larger molecule. So we're bringing that carbon from carbon dioxide and we're sticking it onto a carbohydrate and making glucose. So Rubisco is one of the most important enzymes on earth. By fixing CO2, Rubisco gives plants and algae the carbon they need to make sugars. Other enzymes in the Calvin cycle use the chemical energy in ATP and NADPH in those light dependent reactions, those um, high energy molecules push or provide the energy 
to make uh, the rest of the glucose molecule. The Kelvin cycle needs both ATP and NADPH. Sugars cannot be made if either ATP or NADH are not available. So this is going to be important when we're trying to decide in our case study of the Great Barrier Reef what's going wrong in the algae that are working with the coral and getting kicked out because they're not paying their glucose rent. Which of the following is true about the Kelvin cycle? Rabisco fixes O2? Nope, it fixes carbon dioxide. Uh, both ATP and NADBH are needed to make sugars. That's true. Light energy is converted to chemical energy. Not so much. It, that's done in the first part of photosynthesis, but not the Kelvin cycle. So let's see if we're correct. It's important to remember that you need both of these when we go solve our problem here. So here's our review. In photosynthesis, the photosystems make ATP and NADH needed by the Kelvin cycle to make sugars. So PS2 makes ATP and it also splits water and sends its electrons down to PS1, which makes NADPH. The Kelvin cycle makes sugars using carbon dioxide um, and water and the, it's powered by ATP and NADPH. It needs both. So let's go back to the lab sheet. There's a key concept. PS2 supplies PS1 with electrons. So now you know what to fill in right there for question 17. The review is just read the review. It's a good reference here to have when you're looking at some of the problem later on the Great Barrier Reef. We know question 18 I gave you the key concept right here. Um, we know which enzyme here is one of the most important enzymes on Earth. By fixing CO2, this enzyme, which you can figure out the name of, gives plants and algae the carbon they need to make sugars. In the Calvin cycle, what role do ATP and NADPH? In other words, why are they important? Well, they're the chemical energy that drives the cycle. ATP and NADPH provide the chemical energy to run the Kelvin cycle. Because the Kelvin cycle isn't light dependent directly. It does rely, it has to be light for it to happen because it needs those ATP and NADPH molecules, but it's not directly dependent on light. It's directly dependent on ATP and NADPH to power that cycle. And remember, the Calvin cycle needs both ATP and NADPH to run. We did this one in the lab. Um, both ATP and NADPH are needed to make sugars. It's not light dependent. It's not directly light dependent. It's dependent on what goes on in the light dependent reactions, but not directly dependent on light. And Rubisco fixes carbon to a carbohydrate molecule. What we're, um, question 22 is going to ask us about what we're doing next here. What would happen if the concentrations of ATP, NADPH, and sugars of each part of photosynthesis stopped working? We're going to go over that. And in each part, you can copy and paste either an up arrow or you can copy and paste a down arrow. I'm not saying this is the right answer. But those arrows are there for you to um, put in. Otherwise, you can draw your own arrows. Or you can write the words increase or decrease. So when you're all done, you can erase all but one arrow in this particular uh, spot. So let's go to our case now.
What would happen to the concentrations of ATP and sugars if PS1 stopped working? Or PS2, excuse me. PS2 is the first part. So ATP would go down, because the first part makes ATP, and ADPH would go down, and because the Calvin cycle can't run without both of those, it would go down too. So let's go back to our table here. So photosystem two quit working, pretty much everything would go downhill. It's the first part of the system, and so it makes sense that the rest of the system might be really impacted if the first step in the system uh, encounters a problem. Like, if you want to do your homework, if you can't get your computer to turn on, then all the other things you need to do your, to do your homework uh, might be more difficult, might not work. The concentration of ATP would go down because it would stop splitting water to make H+. Um, it would also stop sending electrons to the transport chain where NADPH is made. And without H+, to go through ATP synthase, no ATP would be made. NADPH would go down because it's not getting any electrons. If photosystem 2 is broken, photosystem 1 doesn't get any electrons, we don't get any AD, NADPH. And if we don't have any NADPH and ATP, we can't make any sugar. What would happen to the concentrations of ATP, NADPH, and sugars if PS1 stopped working? If PS1 stopped working, that's this step here. PS2 would still be okay. So our ATP, we'd still be making ATP. It just wouldn't be getting used in the Calvin cycle. We wouldn't be making any NADH because PS1 is down, it's not working. And we wouldn't be making any sugars because remember, sugars, the Kelvin cycle to make sugars needs both ATP and NADPH to function. So we wouldn't get any sugars. ATP, correct, it would go up. NADPH would go down. The Calvin cycle can't make sugars without NADPH and ATP. So now we can fill this part out for PS1. We know that ATP is going to go up and NADH and sugars are both going to go down. Let's continue and figure out what's going to happen if something is wrong with the Kelvin cycle. So if the Kelvin cycle stopped working, we'd still have the same ATP. We'd be producing the same amount of ATP, but it wouldn't be getting used so it would increase. We'd still be producing NADPH, but it wouldn't be getting used, so it would actually increase. It would build up since the Calvin cycle is not using it. And um, of course, sugars would go down because the Calvin cycle um, can't make sugars if it's broken, if Rubisco is broken or one of those enzymes has a problem we're not going to get any sugars. ATP will go up, and ADPH will go up because it's not getting used, and sugars will go down. So let's fill out our lab sheet here. We know that the two high energy molecules, NADPH and ATP, are going to go up, and sugar is going to go down. Now I can erase these other, let's put this 
one down here. So now we're going to continue um, to the case part of uh, the gizmos and we're going to make some hypothesis about what may be causing our coral reef to fail. So we're back in the case and we're starting an experiment. Remember coral bleaching happens when the algae that lives in the coral which is a separate organism from the coral, but has a relationship with it. The coral gives it a home. The algae give, does photosynthesis to feed the coral. The coral has kicked the algae out because it's not paying its rent. It's not doing photosynthesis and making glucose. So the coral gets rid of the algae. And then it's bleached. It looks like this. It's not because someone poured bleach on it. It's because it kicked it, its algae partner out. Our job is to find out why the algae, algae stopped making sugars. So we have a normal seawater tank. This is a tank with healthy coral and normal seawater. We can measure the concentrations of ATP, NADPH, and sugar in the algae. As we do experiments, the data will be shown in these graphs. The starting concentrations in the algae are shown by the dashed lines. We'll first collect data from the coral in normal seawater, and this will be your control data, was shown in this table. We're going to add light to start photosynthesis. So in healthy coral, we get more ATP, we get more and ADPH, and we get more sugar. Now let's go to GBR, Great Barrier Reef Water. Let's compare. So this is normal seawater on when we add GBR water, uh, everything goes down. So when we look here, um, the numbers here in the normal seawater are larger, and in the GBR seawater, they're lower. What did GBR water do to the concentration of ATP? Well, this is kind of baseline, and this is normal seawater, so it certainly looks to me like it went down. NADPH again went down because normal seawater is up here and GBR water is down here. And sugar also went down. Let's make a hypothesis. So you need to find out why the Great Barrier Reef water is inhibiting or stopping photosynthesis in the algae. The three major parts of photosynthesis are PS1, PS2, and the Calvin cycle. The database has provided three things that could be inhibiting photosynthesis, high sea temperatures, paraquat, and diuron. Let's click on this to learn more. High sea temperatures um, at normal sea temperatures, Rubisco fixes carbon dioxide to help the Calvin cycle make sugars. At high sea temperatures, Rubisco doesn't work as well, stops working, and no sugar is made. So maybe the ocean is hotter. Maybe that's our problem. Paraquat is an herbicide that stops PS1 from working. Some farmers use paraquat to kill weeds, but this herbicide can cause environmental issues when it's washed into rivers and oceans. Inside chloroplast, paraquat removes electrons from PS1. Without electrons, NADPH cannot be made. So it looks like paraquat messes with NADPH. Diuron is painted onto the bottoms of boats to kill LJ. Diuron enters into the ocean water and also can kill the algae and corals. In the chloroplast, diuron stops PS2 from sending electrons to the electron transport chain. It has two effects. Without electron transport chain, there's not enough hydrogen ions to make ATP. 
and if no electrons are sent to PS1, no NADPH can be made. So it looks like diuron kind of just messes up um, both systems here. So use your research to choose a cause of the problem. Do we think high sea temperatures are messing with rubisco? Do we think paraquat is messing with the NADPH? Or do we think diuron is messing with PS1 and PS2? Form your hypothesis and we'll um, collect data and finish up in part three of this video.